Honored guests, friends, family, faculty, and my fellow graduates. My name is Lindsay Kaiser, and I have the distinct honor of being your class valedictorian this morning. Before I begin, I'd just like to start with a few thank yous. I'd first like to thank everyone in the administrative office for all of their hard work in organizing and preparing for such an important day. Second, I'd like to thank all those faculty members who are here today to support us. You've not only been our teachers for the last three years, but also our mentors, and we will carry the lessons that you've given us long into our careers. Finally, I'd like to thank my classmates for giving me the opportunity to speak this morning. I can think of no greater honor than being chosen to represent such a diverse, intelligent, passionate, and successful group of people. You've given me an amazing gift, and I'm incredibly thankful. You also deserve a big round of applause for writing your final Ontario bar exam yesterday, and an even bigger round of applause for making it here on time this morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I spent a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to say to you today, and as any typical law student would do, I did a lot of Googling. I spent countless hours watching YouTube valedictorian speeches and commencement addresses, but really all I learned is that there are a lot of very smart, very eloquent, and very accomplished people in the world. Since attempting to parrot a speech by Oprah or J.K. Rowling or Steve Jobs was really a non-starter, I decided to listen to the old saying and go with what I know. So, what do I know, you might ask? Well, hopefully after three years at law school, I do know a bit about the law. But what I really know, when I go back to my roots, is English literature. I study in English before I came to law school, so when I'm in doubt, I always go back to literature. Since there's no doubt in my mind that if I want to say something, a great poet or author has already said it a million times better. In searching for a suitable piece for our law school convocation, I kept coming back to a poem from the Victorian era. It's one of my favorite poems by Lord Alfred Tennyson. It's called Ulysses. The poem is a dramatic monologue spoken by an elderly Ulysses, perhaps better known as Odysseus from Homer's The Odyssey. In the poem, Ulysses reflects back on his heroic achievements and looks forward, yearning to return to sea. Today, we also reflect back on our achievements, which are perhaps something short of heroic, but surely laudable in their own right. And like Ulysses, we look forward. When I first considered referencing Ulysses, I worried that you wouldn't appreciate the comparison. I mean, the speaker in Tennyson's poem was an old man of vast experience. How are we, a group of young and naive graduates, at all similar? We hadn't seen the world yet, you might argue. Our real lives had yet to begin. However, I would argue that that's not the case for the 170 graduates who sit before you today. Sure, our real jobs next year won't permit us to stay in bed and nurse a hangover on a Thursday morning, or take a day off just because we feel like it. But I think it would be wrong to suggest that in the last three years we haven't encountered real-world challenges or celebrated real-world successes. Real life didn't wait for us to write exams and papers and moving submissions. While managing the rigors of law school, we've become engaged gotten married, raised children, dealt with physical illness in the depths of friends and family. We face the stress and excruciating self-doubt that comes with a difficult job market. As volunteers in our legal clinics, we've gone to court, won our first trials, and provided critical access to justice to those who could not otherwise afford it. We've made submissions to Supreme Court justices in moot courtrooms, and traveled internationally for internship programs and academic exchanges. And so, I believe it is appropriate to compare ourselves to Ulysses today, as we both celebrate our accomplishments 
and mark an end to an era of our lives. So now, hopefully having convinced you that my speech isn't just an academic dissection of a boring poem by some dead guy, <laughs> let me tell you why Tennyson's poem resonates so much for me today. First, as we reflect on the past. Second, as we pause to celebrate our achievements. And third, as we look to the future. As Ulysses reflects on the past, he says, All times I have enjoyed greatly, have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. Much I have seen and known, cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments, and drunk delight of battle with my peers. I am part of all that I have met. Well, I think that as law students, we will all look back fondly on the drunk delight of battle with our peers. It's the final line that brings most true for me today. I am part of all that I have met. Former Dean Holloway told us on our very first day of law school that we are an incredibly diverse group of people. Our three years at Western Law have only made us fuller and richer in character. For this, we owe a debt of gratitude to our professors. They challenged us, pushed us to think critically, and for many of us, made us work harder than we ever imagined we could. But we also had each other to thank. Dean Holloway also told us that first day that we were joining a unique and collegial law school community. This could not have been more true. I encourage the friends and family who are here today to take some time to talk to the other graduates after this ceremony. Ask them how they invested their time at Western Law. You'll find that the majority of students you talk to weren't just involved in a single extracurricular activity to bolster their resume. Rather, you'll find that they participated in a wide array of clubs and committees, competed at the national or international level in moot competitions, spent countless hours working for a legal clinic, and raised thousands of dollars for charity for our annual talent night and otherwise. This level of engagement in the school community has helped us build bonds that will endure far beyond graduation. Speak to any Western Law graduate across the country and you'll learn that the Western Law community has deep roots that stretch far beyond the four walls of this law school. To offer a personal anecdote, a month and a day ago, I married a Western Law alum. Joining us in our wedding party were five Western Law alumni, and a quarter of our guests were friends from Western Law. The friendships we form here endure long past our three years. Class of 2013, right now, you're sitting with the people who will be your lifelong friends, your children's godparents, and maybe even your spouses. And I can tell you from experience that more than a few of them will be left on the dance floor at 2.30 a.m. on the night of your wedding. <laughs> the strength of this community is why today is so bittersweet. Together, we've experienced times of seemingly insurmountable stress, followed by moments of incredible elation. We've supported each other through three of the most challenging and rewarding years of our lives. Today, we stop and reflect on this achievement, and I think that for many of us, it brings mixed feelings. Early in Tennyson's poem, Ulysses better articulates what I mean when he says, How dull it is to pause, to make an end, to rust unburnished, not to shine in use. It is difficult to pause, to make an end, because we're always looking forward, striving to do more, since each of us first decided to go to law school, we've written LSATs, completed admissions applications, finished undergraduate degrees, struggled through first year exams, participated in moons, volunteered at legal clinics, sought out jobs, endured two more years of demanding exams, only to spend the last two months poring over bar materials. After each minor achievement, we have immediately moved on to the next task, ceaselessly shining into use. So today, when we finally pause to recognize our achievements, 
it's only natural that we immediately anticipate what's coming next. It's hard not to anticipate the challenges ahead. Our generation is constantly told that times are tough and we face a world of unprecedented uncertainty, both in the practice of law and otherwise. But isn't that always the case? Should such words of caution temper our aspirations and make us dream smaller? Let's not spend precious time today entertaining such fears or arguing that we all need to grit our teeth to bear a time of economic uncertainty and tumult in the legal profession. Instead, let's see it another way. The periods of greatest change and uncertainty produce the most incredible human advances. For an example of this, we need not look any further than the Victorian era when Tennyson penned Ulysses. I believe that in spite of the challenges that may face us, this group of graduates will go on to do great things. Sure, as a practical matter, we will all leave here and carve out very different paths. Some will practice in big firms, while others will join boutique firms or become sole practitioners. Others will help those less fortunate in legal clinics while others will choose to use the skills they gained here outside the legal profession. The practice of law is changing rapidly, and it's very clear that receiving a law degree in 2013 means something very different than it did when some of our parents or grandparents received theirs. We are all charged with discovering exactly what that means. Ulysses says, all experience is an arch where through gleams that untraveled world, whose margin fades forever and forever when I move. While we all may all go on to carve different paths, the common thread binding our class is that we all leave here today with the purpose of exploring those untraveled margins. I believe will play a critical role in innovating and reshaping them. Friends, there's no doubt that today is a day of celebration. But still, you may find yourselves tempted to downplay your accomplishments. From a young age, we're taught that humility is a virtue. Young women especially are told that we should <coughs> modestly accept congratulations and then demure, cite laugh or credit others. I want to suggest that even just for today, we should own our success and be proud of it. I want to encourage every single graduate in the room to take the opportunity today to truly celebrate your achievement and recognize it as a significant accomplishment. The fact that we're sitting here is a big deal, and not just for the friends and family who are here to cheer us on. We've achieved something that not just anyone could achieve, and we deserve to be proud. Now, I don't mean to suggest that we did this alone, because that would be mistaken. We all need to take time today to thank those loved ones who supported us over the last three years. Friends and family, you, comfort us, you comforted us as we stressed over exams and article positions, patiently listened to us when we complained endlessly about how busy we were, and encouraged us when we were ready to give up. We haven't forgotten where we began, and our achievement today is also your achievement. And now, speaking of where we began, I'm going to finish my speech where it began, with Tennyson's Ulysses. But before I begin, you should know that the beautiful thing about modern literary criticism is that the reader is permitted to view a text with its meaning. That means, as a reader, you can take what you want and leave the rest on the page. The text becomes new every time someone reads it. So keep that in mind when I read you the last 15 lines of Tennyson's Ulysses. You may find these lines altogether too epic for today. In that case, adopt the point of view of a disinterested critic and leave them on my page. You may, however, as I do, find them inspiring. And graduates, they may just leave you with something to remember as you walk across the stage today and receive your diploma. Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. Push off and sitting well in order smite the sounding furrows. For my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset 
and the baths of all the western stars until I die. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down. It may be that we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles whom we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Thank you.